Coming up, I go over every tool that I own to get just about any job done, including car tools, shop tools, house tools, and anything in between. If you like, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and if you've got any questions, I'll answer them in the comments below. So Christmas is coming up and maybe this can help inspire you for gifts for others or for even yourself. I've got about five years of home maintenance and almost a decade of car maintenance under my belt and I figured that might give you some ideas for what you could use in your shop. Everything shown in this video is going to be linked in the description below. Every time somebody buys something from a link in the description, I actually get a cut of that and that'll help go towards supporting this channel in future videos. First, since this is a car channel, let's go over the car tools. Let's start out with the most beneficial tool I think that I've ever bought, which is these impact drivers here. They will truly change your life. These are obviously used for loosening up bolts and wheel lugs and stuff. If you have an impact, then you've got to get these 3 8 inch drive screwdriver tips and hex head set. Also got this 3 8 inch drive torx set. One of the most useful things I've ever picked up is this headlamp, but it seems to have escaped me at this time. And one of the most handy and helpful tools is this Bluetooth car diagnostic tool. It's called the OBD Link MX Plus. You can even do some data logging with it. With my DeWalt drill, I've got a gator grip socket that can adapt to just about anything, wire wheel set, a step bit set, a drill bit set, just about any adapter to sockets or to screwdriver tips, the screwdriver tip set, a drill bit sizing gauge, and a hole saw. So I've got a pretty decent tool chest. They're all cracked. I think this is the mid-tier toolbox. I also have these magnetic toolbox labels that come in handy for organizing. These are called vamp pliers. They're one of the best purchases I've ever made. They're really good at grabbing screws. And I've got some really high quality side cutters. And one of my favorite other tools to use is these bent nose pliers here. And I've got an assortment of other types of needle nose pliers. I love this thin profile quarter inch socket wrench here. I've got some assorted socket wrenches for 3 8 inch drive. And I really love these two swiveling head socket wrenches. I've got just about every length and size of extension of one quarter inch, three eighths and half inch drive. Then I've got every size of swivel. Then I've got every size of adapter from one socket drive to another. I would like a wobbler extension set someday. I've got just about every wrench size up to 32 millimeters and one and a quarter. Also got the special set and organizer of ratcheting gear wrench set for both metric and English. For Christmas, I asked for some swiveling gear wrenches instead. Here's a wrench set and organizer that have some teeth on them, so they're kind of like a ratcheting wrench. We've got this set of line wrenches here that comes in handy for getting brake line fittings and other sorts of hoses loose. I've got a very nice Craftsman 300 plus piece socket set. I do have an impact socket set, but I just don't find myself using it often. Here I keep my miscellaneous screwdrivers, mini screwdrivers, hooks, pokers, and nut drivers. I've got an endoscope or boroscope camera. It's Bluetooth and can display a video on your phone. And I've got some various lights and magnet tools and magnets for retrieving things. And a big uh, snake grabber thing too, has magnet on the end as well. Temperature gauge for pointing out my exhaust headers, make sure nothing is misfiring. This is a line flaring tool kit. And I've got an ethanol test kit, see how much ethanol content's in your gas. Compression tester kit, a grease gun for greasing zerks on your car, an adjustable ball joint removal tool, a riveter with several different sizes, a torque angle meter to be used with a torque wrench, two torque wrenches for two different ranges, and just remember that every single bolt should have an associated torque with it. And if you can't find it, you can look up a chart. Then I've got a thread chaser for cleaning out my 7 16 head bolts. And I've got some bolt extractor tools. These things tend to snap off. This is an antifreeze freezing point tester kit. Make sure that you have enough antifreeze to water. And then I've got a Harbor Freight pump just for siphoning out a tank or something. Several different styles and sizes of oil filter wrenches and then several different funnels. A large funnel is for hands-off filling up a radiator. Assorted hose clamps, a spark plug crimping tool, a Cummins harmonic balancer puller, some spark plug gap tools, and plenty of automotive fuses. And I actually just picked up HP tuners, so I'll be doing some custom tuning in the future. I've also got this magnetic flashlight and work light combo. It's rechargeable. Can't forget the trim piece popper tool. Here's a snap ring tool, 
some breaker transmission line or pipe cutting tools, a boot clamp install tool, and a variety of different vice grips that any car guy is sure to need at some point. So here's a heat gun and three different tape measures. Some are metric and some are English. Then the trusty Sawzall and angle grinder. And I use the angle grinder for just about anything. And I've got an assortment of brushes, a brass brush. I've also got some steel wool and some scotch brights. Assorted markers, paint markers, grease pencil, wax pencil, a sparker and a lighter, and a deburr tool for deburring newly drilled holes. Then I've got some Velcro, a bunch of assorted chisels, punches, and files. And I've got a nice metric and English Allen wrench set of different lengths. A magnet bowl for putting any nuts, bolts, or screws in. A good old tap and die set for threading new holes. A couple of metal hack saws for doing any kind of metal work with. A big wedge and all of my hammers, several different sizes up to including a ball peen, a rubber mallet, and a couple of five pound hammers. Some big pry bars and one really big pry bar and then a crowbar. A cheater bar, which is just literally a pipe for helping break loose things and a two foot, half inch drive breaker bar. Then some big C-clamps, and then some dial calipers. Wouldn't cheap out on these. One's a six inch and one's a 12 inch. And then here's a little oiler. I also need a slide hammer to add to my collection. I also hang on a lot of spray bottles, keep a hot glue gun around, a uh, blade sharpener and all of my various utility knives and their respective replacement utility blades too, and some plastic utility blades. Then here's a variety of tin snips, some crescent or monkey wrenches, some channel locks, and a couple of sorted sizes of pipe wrenches. I've also got myself some bolt cutters. I also have this separate set of torch screwdrivers and safety torch bits. I got these two boxes of assorted O-rings for a couple dollars on Amazon. If you do any fuel line work, then you've got to pick up some of these fuel line removal tools. These are some valve grinding or valve lapping suction cups. And don't forget about the good old oil drain pan. And don't forget about oil dry to clean up some of those oily messes. This blowtorch is pretty convenient. It's not great for busting bolts loose because it doesn't get that hot, but it's great for starting fires. A good Dremel kit can always come in handy for some odd cutting jobs. I've got a two foot jack that's low profile and a bunch of jack stands too. Everyone should have a creeper for getting underneath your car. The lower the better. Everybody needs a good adjustable stool for their shop. If doing any engine work, this engine stand is a must. I've got four of these wheel dollies for putting each tire on and rolling the cars around the garage when they're not mobile. This cherry picker is not necessary for most of my engine swap stuff, but it is very helpful to move things around in the shop. And no shop would be complete without a shop vac. Got a couple of 500 watt shop lights. These things do get pretty hot, but they do sure light up the garage. It's hard to tell how bright these are, but these LED shop lights sure are amazing. They're 4,050 lumens a piece. And I've got a splitter to double them up. Everybody needs an LED bench light as well. I've got this battery charger that has a two amp, 12 amp, and 75 amp jump start mode on it for deep cycle and regular batteries. I almost forgot jumper cables. I also have a decent sized toolbox for throwing in the car on long trips in case I break down. A couple of five gallon gas tanks. I've got this propane heater for heating up the garage in the winters. Does get a bit smelly. This bug lantern can be really useful for keeping the bugs at bay in the summers. Of course, who doesn't like a good shop radio? This is a high CFM air compressor with a dryer custom put on there and a custom hose reel that I mounted to the side. This 30 gallon compressor is a bit noisy, but it gets the job done. Here's my tire pressure gauges, my air hose, and my tire filler. I do have lots of air tools, but I actually don't use any of them because my electric DeWalt's actually do a better job, except I might want to start using this right angle ratchet more. I'd also like to get an impact hammer at some point. I've also got two different size bench vices that I probably could not live without. I always keep a plastic bin for draining things or transporting fluids in. I've also got this fender mat for putting on the side of a car when you're working on it so when you reach over you don't scratch up the paint. Tools that I don't have are usually readily available to rent at a local auto parts store. At some point I would like to get a drill press, a mill, a lathe, a mobile car lift, and a welder of some sort. Now for some more generic shop tools that you should still have if you're a car guy, but you also might want to have if you're not. I mounted this extension cord reel because I don't have a lot of outlets in my garage and boy is it pretty handy to get a long 50 foot extension cord about anywhere I need. I also keep a couple five gallon buckets full of chains and extension cords. I love this DeWalt cordless blower though small, it really helps clean out my shop. I always get my zip ties at Harbor Freight because they're so cheap compared to anywhere else. I also keep a jar full of bungee cords handy. I've also got a come along winch for moving around some oddball stuff. This tape machine can also come in handy when shipping a lot of packages. I also keep some sandpaper in a box and some good old fashioned duct tape. A collapsible folding table is a must for any shop projects. I've got a couple big parts organizer cabinets, 
for nuts, bolts, screws, and electrical components. Bought both of these off of estate sales and they had a lot of stuff in them. I just put up these storage racks there. They only take a couple of minutes each to install. I really like these stowaway bins with wheels and handles. They're clear, so it's easy to search through them. I also keep a couple of empty containers around just to drain stuff in. I've got these sawhorse stands for doing any odd jobs. Of course, no shop could be complete without the shop broom. I keep a decent trash bin in the shop at all times. I always keep some neodymium magnets around the shop. I've also got this handy watch glass here for magnifying things. Let's go over some consumable car hardware now. I've got some thick gardening gloves, a dust mask, some cut resistance tear away gloves, a couple varieties of hearing protection. I really like this yellow one here because I can just put it around my neck. Of course, a bunch of safety glasses. Car oil is pretty hard to find, but it's probably the best creeping oil and penetrating lubricant. I have some mass airflow cleaner, some brake parts cleaner, lots of it. I like to use liquid wrench as a cheaper alternative for creeping oil. Then I have some aluminum anti-seize lubricant, and of course, shop towels. This paint and epoxy remover can get about any gaskets off in a matter of minutes. I also keep handy some gray and black gasket maker, some five minute epoxy, some Loctite red and blue, valve grinding compound, pipe thread compound, super glue, some Molly solid lubricant powder, camshaft and lifter install lube, some air tool oil, some lithium grease, and some oil treatment break-in additive with zinc. Also always keep on hand some isopropyl alcohol, acetone, fuel injector cleaner, brake fluid, two cycle oil, power steering fluid, some antifreeze, and some lighter fluid. Here's what I use to clean my cars now. I keep a duster around with some fingers on it for car shows. Then I have a scratch-free drying cloth and another cloth with fingers on it for washing. I've got some surface prep chemical for wax and grease remover, some goo gone to get rid of some big messes, iron removing spray, which is for getting rid of brake dust on wheels, some rubbing compound for getting anything out of paint or clear coat, a wash and wax car soap combination. Make sure you don't use dish soap. Some metal polish, some new finish compound spray wax, and tire shine. And I always keep some distilled white vinegar for removing rust. I've also got a buffer up here. I'll move on to some electrical components. I've got a function generator. I used to have an oscilloscope, but it broke and I need a new one. And I've got these, uh, a big jar of wire nuts for doing some AC 120. I've also got a voltage tester for the same thing. Then here's all my soldering equipment. I call these helping hands. They help you hold two wires in place when you're trying to solder them together. Also some solid and liquid solder flux, solder braid, electrical tape, several different styles of wire strippers, and a couple pliers and wire cutters. And I've got a big assorted box of electrical butt connectors and then a ton of wire and stuff. So I have a couple different organizers for storing just about any electronics parts, including heat shrink. Also got a bench soldering iron and DC power supply. I have had this Radio Shack multimeter for a pretty long time. It does a pretty good job at just about everything. It can even measure frequency and capacitance. Although it would be nice to have some probes that could poke through the insulation or had alligator clips on them. Now let's move on to some house project and outdoor tools. I've got this concrete hammer drill, I've only used it a few times, and I've got this tack hammer which is really useful for prying up old nails and stuff. You can do just about anything with a circular saw, you can basically make it into a table saw as long as you have a nice level or square. Here's an orbital sander, saves a lot of work. And I've got a, an electric nailer and stapler, and then a manual stapler, then a caulker, and a bunch of C clamps and wood clamps of sorts and then some really big clamps. And I've got my squares, and this big one's a drywall square here. Level squares and triangles. Then I have a rasp for drywall and paint scraper. And then a wood saw, a coping saw for, for wood trim boards, and a brass brush. I also absolutely love my cordless DeWalt weed eater. Moving on to some home and garden stuff. We've got a uh, ball pump or a bike tire pump, pump sprayer, seed spreader, and electric power washer. I really like this fold-out step ladder. Works pretty good and stows away really nice. This step ladder is one of the handier things I've ever bought. I might also want a general oscillator tool, chainsaw, and a bigger leaf blower someday. I actually probably use a snow shovel more than I use my snow blower. If this video helped you out, please leave a comment below and let me know. And feel free to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you use the links in the description of these parts that I show you, I will actually get a cut of that that will help me towards future car projects.